Hi, my name is Vincent and I use Ardor as a digital audio workstation to record and mix music. Recently, I made the acquisition of an Elgato Stream Deck. It's a nifty little device which seems very popular among the online streamers, which I'm not. Instead, my intention was to use the Stream Deck to automate some repetitive actions in Ardor that typically involve using the mouse, navigating menus, dragging and dropping, and so forth. This is particularly interesting if, like me, you use a hardware control surface as it already reduces the usage of the mouse in favor of a more organic workflow. So I'm going to show you here my setup that addresses my current needs and is only meant to serve as inspiration. If you're interested in the concept, I expect you would adapt what I'm showing to fit your own workflow. You will find in the video descriptions links to the tools, scripts, plugins that you'll see me using. So let's jump in. So here, I've created a dummy session and I'll pretend to be working on it. I often start by creating some MIDI tracks to build a backing track, so I typically capture some keyboards, drums, something like that. Let's add a MIDI track using the configured button. I was to be expected, a new MIDI track is added. Notice how the instrument plugin is set to Ace Fluid Synth. It's a plugin that allows the use of SF2 sound fonts. Now if I open the plugin's config, notice how it's already configured to pick up one of my presets that loads a standard general MIDI sound phone. That's something that you normally have to go through manually. For drums, I often work with hydrogen, as it allows to work with patterns, it's personal preference. But I often feed the MIDI output of hydrogen into Ardor. It's not a very complicated operation, but you have to open the MIDI routing matrix, go on the appropriate tabs, and link the hydrogen output to the track's input. But now, I can go to my MIDI submenu on the Stream Deck, and hit the button for Hydrogen. Notice how the input port of my selected MIDI track is now connected to Hydrogen. Pretty quick. If I hit the play button, you can see the MIDI notes are now flowing into my MIDI track. I also wanted to make use of the Stream Deck to quickly insert the plugins I use over and over. I'm going to show you a few examples. While we are on the MIDI track, I often use the MIDI Monitor plugin when I need to filter or modify events. So here, Simply pressing the corresponding button inserts the plugin in the first position on the track. Let's hit play again. And yes, I'm monitoring MIDI events. OK, so now it's time to add some audio. Back on the main screen, pressing the Add Audio button adds a new mono track. That's because it's the type of track that I use most. Not only is it adding a track, but check out the meter type. I've set this action to automatically set the meter to RMS plus peak type as it's what I use when I'm going to set the input gain before recording. When I record guitar or bass, I often insert a tuner on the track so I can ensure the instrument is in tune between takes. So I've configured this button here to insert the GuitarX tuner plugin. And here it is. Let's add some compression to this track. If I enter the Dynamics submenu, I find the compressors I use most. That's the commercial Applied Computer Technologies ones, but also some free ones like the compressor from the EQ10 suite, with and without sidechain, the X42 dynamic compressor, the LSP multiband, or even the Calf DSR. Let's pick the CS10Q. Without surprises, it's added to the track. But there is a little more magic here. It turns out that this CS10Q plugin exists both as a mono and a stereo plugin. So here the script figured out I'm working on the mono track and automatically picked up the mono version of the plugin. Let's add something else to this track, say reverb. Going back up on the main menu and from there to the time FX submenu, here I've stored the Calf Vintage plugin I often use, the Overtone DSP plate reverb, the excellent Dragonfly reverb suite, and the Tar reverb. Let's pick this one. OK, you get the idea about adding plugins. The scripts ensure the plugin is always added in the last position before the fader. As you can see, I also made submenus for things like distortion and chorus, but no point in going through them. It's the exact same concept. But let me show you another powerful action. I use different techniques to handle drums depending on the song, using plugins like Drum Gizmo, the AVL Red Zeppelin, or Black Pearl Virtual Instruments, but sometimes, I need to mix and match different sound fonts to achieve the result that I want. So I've created a script that fans out a MIDI track 
to a number of MIDI buses that hold their own sound font and only play the specific notes to deal with, say, kick, snare, hi-hat, cymbals, toms, etc. Let's give it a run with our MIDI track. From the main menu to the MIDI submenu, and here I press the MIDI drum button. See the collection of MIDI buses that have been created? They each have the Ace Fluid Synth plugin and the MIDI note filter, or filters, to play only the intended instrument. Notice how they're all being fed by aux sends from the initial MIDI track, and these sends are placed before the fader, as it's my preference. Also notice how they all route to this newly created drum audio stereo bus that itself routes to the master bus. And sherry on the cake, all these elements have a red color, which is the color I use to identify my drum parts. Now for the sake of demonstration, let's add something to this stereo bus. Let's add an EQ and a compressor to this one. From the main menu, I click the FREC submenu. Here you see I've stored the Applied Computer Music Technology Parametric EQ, the EQ10 Single Band Parametric EQ, and also the simple High Low Pass filter that ships with Ardor. Let's pick the ACM210, and here it is. And now let's add a compressor. So again, from the main screen to the Dynamics submenu. And I pick the X42 Dynamic Compressor. Here too, this plugin exists both in mono and stereo version. As you can see this time, the script has correctly picked up the stereo version. To finish with this demo, I'm going to show you a macro I've made to add plugins I always end up putting on my master bus. So here I press the master config button and I get the X42 limiter before the fader and also a stereo phase meter, a spectrum analyzer, the EBU R128 meter and stereo view meter inserted after the fader. Pretty quick. That's something you could also achieve by using a session template, so every new project would always get these plugins. But this way of working with a scripted mechanism allows you to do it even on all projects. OK, until now we've seen how to automate tasks to improve our workflow. But there's another use of the Stream Deck that you might find interesting if you don't already have a control surface. You can use the buttons of the Stream Deck to pilot the transport of Ardor. Let's have a look. I've configured yet another submenu on my Stream Deck for these transport operations. From here I can go to the next mark, go to the previous mark, jump to the end of the session, jump to the start of the session, play, stop, toggle the global record, toggle the click, toggle auto return, and toggle the exclusive solo mode. Note that in current version 6.9 of Ardor, this last one only works if you enable the monitoring section. Okay, now that you've seen what is possible by combining Ardor and a Stream Deck, it's time to show you how this is all configured. Except for the transport action that we just saw, everything else I showed you is done via the powerful support of Lua scripts in Ardor. Let's navigate to the Windows menu and click Scripting. This is where we can edit our scripts. In the drop-down menu, navigating to the Actions category, you can see a whole bunch of scripts that ship with Ardor, and here you can also see the ones I created. Here we're seeing the script that adds all the plugins to the master bus as I used before. Now, writing Lua scripts is beyond the scope of this video, and the Ardor manual has a dedicated chapter for that. Note that in GitHub repository of Ardor, you will find dozens of example scripts for all sorts of usage. They are in the Share Script folder. I myself recently contributed nine such scripts to the Ardor code repository, some that I demoed in this video. For instance, how to add the audio track, add the MIDI monitor, add the guitarix tuner, add the X42 dynamic compressor with the switch of mono or stereo version, and how to configure the master bus with all the plugins added before and after the fader. Okay, so assuming you've made some scripts to perform the automations you want, we now need to register them as action scripts so they can be invoked by means of, say, a menu shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, or more. For that, we need to access the Edit menu, then Lua Scripts, and select Script Manager. As you can see, you can register 32 such action scripts. 
you need to use the Add Set button, and then, from the drop-down menu, select the script that you want to associate. So each script registered has a matching number between 1 and 32. Remember that, it's important for the next steps. But these configured actions can be invoked via keyboard shortcuts, or you can add the first 10 as buttons on the Ardour user interface. That's already a good workflow improvement possibility if you don't have a stream deck. But what's even better is that these 32 action scripts are also exposed via the Open Sound Control, or OSC protocol, that Ardour supports to interact with control surfaces. That's what our Stream Deck is going to use. For that, we must enable the support of OSC protocol in the Ardour preferences. So we go in the preferences dialog, then control surfaces, and ensure the OSC protocol is enabled via this checkbox. From there on, Ardour is listening for OSC commands on the local 3819 port in UDP protocol. So the last part of the puzzle is getting the Stream Deck to send OSC commands. In fact, the Stream Deck is capable of launching any external program, so we'll be using a small command line utility called OSC Send. It ships with most distributions. Getting the Stream Deck to work on your Linux distribution is also beyond the scope of this video. I use Stream Deck UI, but there are other tools, so you should pick the one that best suits your needs. When opening the config panel on Stream Deck UI, you can see the buttons are configured to launch OSC command and that the command calls the registered script by their number as seen before. Remember, number 1 to 32. For example, here, here's the button for the guitarix tuner, that is script number 6. Adding the audio track launches script number 3. Adding MIDI track is number 4. And configuring the master bus is script number 7. The transport part is different because Ardour exposes dedicated OSC commands for these. But let's have a look. You see that the Stream Deck works with pages to deal with submenus. Here, my transport page is configured as page number 6, so let's go there. And you can see that the buttons begin of a session. There's a dedicated OSC command called go to start. For the end, there's a go to end. For play, a transport play. For stop, transport stop. For rec, there's a rec enable toggle command. Notice that for this one, there is actually no feedback that is visible on the Stream Deck. So whether the rec is enabled or disabled will only be visible on the Ardo interface, not on the Stream Deck itself. There's also OSC commands to go to the previous marker with the prev marker command, next marker with the next marker command. There's a command for invoking the MIDI panic button. There's a command toggle click that will enable to um, enable or disable the metronome click. And there's also a command loop toggle to enable or disable the looping of the playback. All actions are described in the Ardo manual. And that means any action that you could launch with the mouse or via menu or otherwise inside Ardo. So the imagination is only the limit here. You can really do anything. So, I hope this has given you a good overview of the possibilities and how to get a Stream Deck working with Ardor. Thanks for watching and don't hesitate to have a look at the rest of my channel. There are some music videos that have been recorded and mixed with Ardor. I hope you like them.